You're listening to Freed on Business. To talk to Jim and his guests, call 305-541-2350. That's now, back to your host, Jim Freed. All right, everybody. You know I go to all these conferences and you meet all these really cool people. We had Last week we had uh, Richard Wilson on. We were talking about his uh, wealth management conference. I was just at it. It was, it was great. And um, we're going to do some more wealth management. And I want to show you how great the Wilson conference was. I'm going to meet, I want you to meet the, probably the top uh, wealth management uh, asset preservation guy in the, in, that I've ever met, Tom Handler. Tom, are you out there? I'm out there. How are you, Jim? I'm doing great, Tom. I guess you're, uh, you're back in Chicago now? I am, and uh, it was uh, a few snow flurries are blowing by my window as we're speaking. Oh, well, listen, it's hot as the dickens down here. Maybe we can meet in the <laughs> middle somewhere. But, um, you know, you were terrific. I really enjoyed meeting you at the conference. You had some really good ideas. We can't go through them all. I kind of touted your appearance today as, as how people could learn just the basics of what's going on out there. And maybe we can get you on in the future for a full show and really talk about some details. But, Tom... What are some of the changes that are going on out there in the family office space, the people that have all the wealth, looking to protect it? How do you help? Well, I think there's, there's a lot of trends in the industry, uh, and there's no question that over time it's getting harder and harder for families to preserve family businesses and their wealth from generation to generation, and, and not that it's ever been easy. But, for example, you know, in the last 10, 15 years, we've had unprecedented regulations that are global and that uh, can apply to family offices. So things like the Patriot Act, uh, Dodd-Frank, uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, FATCA, these are very, very serious, you know, voluminous regulations and families are stuck dealing with them. At the same time, you've had a exploding litigation market, uh, you've got sco a scope and sphere of liability that never existed in the past, uh, lawsuits are running rampant and so those risks, risks are increasing. And at the same time, you know, the global P&C markets are contracting, so it's getting a little tougher to, to cover those risks. And when you put it all together, it, it doesn't uh, look like a very good picture. And then add on top of all that that you have uh, a whole host of government agencies being uh, excessively aggressive, largely functioning with little congressional supervision and tremendous power and discretion, and when you're on the radar screen, you're subject to whatever they decide to do to you, and, and that could mean incurring massive legal fees, even though you've not done anything, uh, trying to extricate yourself from these proceedings. So it's a, a very slippery slope for these families. So the key really is about long-term risk management all the way across the board, you know, risk management in activities and conduct, in business structures, uh, in the conduct of business, in uh, elevated levels of compliance, and so it's really about crossing the T's and dotting the I's. And uh, it looks to me like this trend is likely to, to escalate going forward. So it's really about not making mistakes that are wealth destructive events. And that's, you know, in, in that regard, that's where the asset protection and premarital planning, you know, come into play because they can be very destructive of wealth. Now, you've created a couple different things that are trademarked, trademark, the asset protection profile, and I just love this, the stealth prenup. I'm just not going to talk about the asset protection file. you got to tell me what a stealth prenup is. Well, one, one of the keys to uh, the enforceability of prenuptial agreements and postnuptial agreements is the complete, full, and fair exchange of information. And so for affluent families, I mean, that means in many cases literally audited uh, financial statements compiled by a CPA firm. So it's a very high standard. If there's any you know, missing assets or anything hidden or even you know, a significant mistake, you run the risk of having the entire agreement uh, thrown out of court. And so that disclosure obligation is an absolute requirement uh, for the enforcement of those documents. And so we, we went on a little exercise and then we reviewed every case uh, over a five-year period in every state and the territories where a prenup or a postnup were set aside and uh, the the factors were all over the board and so the bottom line is that at the end of the day a judge or a jury uh, has tremendous discretion and uh, the problem is that they may not enforce a perfectly valid agreement and they often force settlement and they often uh, decide against the uh, you know the pop party with the deep pocket so in view of that we devised this structure at this point uh, maybe 15 to 18 years ago, 
uh, and frankly didn't talk about it until about 10 years ago, but the idea is that instead of following the lead of the matrimonial and family law bar to rather use structures as a, as a superior method to protect these assets, and so the stealth prenup was put in place to do just that. So the idea is that a, a very wealthy family or a business owner or a professional athlete or a celebrity who doesn't want to have the prenup discussion, which can be difficult, or they don't want the risk of having the spouse go to the press and, and make a mess and hurt their career and, and have an adverse impact on the family's reputation or the professional's reputation, uh, the stealth prenup allows you to put this structure in place either before the marriage or after the marriage. If you do it after the marriage, it has to be done with only premarital assets that you can trace and, and tie, have an audit trail uh, to prove that, or you do it before the marriage. And so the idea is that we have a business entity uh, like a manager, uh, typically a virtual family office, running a family holding company, almost like a fund structure that you would see with private equity or a hedge fund. And in turn, that uh, family limited liability company, holding company, can only be formed in a very few states that have superior laws for asset protection or approximately 30 foreign countries that have similar laws. It could be either, either way. And then ultimately, that interest in that family holding company is owned in an offshore asset protection trust. And so that combination provides multiple levels of ash protection that are very formidable, and to date, uh, it's never been set aside. Uh, so unlike the Massey uh, prenup of movie fame, uh, this one uh, has not yet been effectively challenged. Well, Tom, that's awesome stuff. I know we only scratched the surface. We talked about getting you back on the show uh, in the future. I'm going to be in touch with you via email to do that. I just want to give people a taste of uh, what, what I learned at the Wilson Conference. And Richard, well, he did a great job at putting everything together. I really enjoyed meeting you. I hope we'll be able to get you back on the show real soon. It was a pleasure. I enjoyed the conference as well and, and enjoyed meeting you.